State University, an absolute beast of a linebacker. Um, spent lots of time uh, in, uh, I think you went into the, the, the car industry, right, MK? excelled rapidly there. And I was one of the top lenders in the country uh, for Guild Mortgage. I mean, he's a top 1% guy. That's why we like to have him on these calls because of his personality, his, his, his drive. Obviously that's infectious. And we want to get a good idea of what's going on in the marketplace. And MK obviously as a lender is one of the biggest lenders in the country has his fingers on the pulse. So we're going to bring him on here every Tuesday just to give us a market update, what's going on in the industry, provide you with some new tools and resources that maybe you didn't know were available to you. Um, and they're always coming out with new products and new ways to help your clients actually get into home. So uh, with that being said, MK, I just want to turn it over to you. Let's get yeah. these guys a market update and, and see what's going on. What's yeah. going on in our industry? Awesome. You know, one big thing, guys, I'm going to take uh, just a little bit of time and I just want to, I'm not going to bore you with just a whole bunch of jargon or anything like that. I just want you guys to have enough information to be dangerous. Okay. At least get a big, you know, 10,000 foot view of what's happening in the market. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I should be able to share this, right? Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Give me permission, Michelle. <laughs> All right. Can There's everybody see this? To man. Okay. Yeah. Can everybody see this? Okay. Yes. Okay. So the biggest I'm thing we're talking about, <laughs> the biggest thing we're talking about, so give it a little bit of uh, perspective on rates. Um, I'm not going to talk to you about, a, a, you know, deep into a yield curve or anything like that. But if you ever see this, this uh, inverted yield, all that's saying is, is, you know, right now with investments, instead of uh, having your most benefits at 10 years, your benefits right now, you'll get more return on a two year versus a 10 year investment, which doesn't, makes sense and that's kind of where we are in the market right now so we'll talk a little bit about demographics um and then uh go from there so biggest thing we're talking about right now is rates like what are rates doing and i think this is super fascinating i want everybody to just pay attention to this for a second i think if you can internalize this it's going to make a big difference in the way of when you get the common objections about interest rates so if you look at here uh should be able to use my little pointer guy right here so um, over here, 1975, anything we see in gray right here, that's when there was typically a recession, okay? So you see 1980 recession uh, as we move on, uh, uh, mid-90s, um, and then we see this 2008. This is the big depression right here in 2008. Everybody see that? So we look back at the rates right now. So back in 1975, we're about 10%. Uh, mid 80s, they got up to about 18, 19%, which Chad, you were telling me, you remember the rates kind of above 10%, right? Uh, back and forth. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So as we see this, this line right here, we're just going to kind of show you where the rates are currently. Okay. So that six and a half to 7% is where they, where they have been. Okay. So now when we look over here, Really what happened right here in 2008 is, you know, we had the subprime mortgages, everything bad that was happening. Then the feds had to step in and then what they have to do, they had to buy the rates down, right? So yeah. this is just to make sure that we keep people, you know, some people keeping their houses or try and correct the market. If the housing market fails, our economy collapses, okay? So we'll see right here what happened during COVID. The feds had to step in and they essentially bought it down to an all time low we were right above two and a half percent at one point. Okay. So we saw this happen when the Fed just came in and absolutely bought everything down to these low rates. Okay. Now that the Fed stopped buying those rates, we started seeing a shift and rates spiked up. Everybody freaked out, right? The only, why did this need to happen? Anybody just come on. Why did the rates have to go up? Anybody? Give me something. Inflation. Somebody, inflation. Yep, absolutely, Cody. Inflation. We had to get inflation under control. The fastest way to get inflation under control is to stop the spending, right? So these rates went up. And to be honest with you, the rates, the highest point in this, this area right now touched about seven and a half percent. They, they might have flirted with eight percent a little bit in there, right? But if we look at this, historically, is that a high rate? Anybody? It's not. No. no. It's not a high rate. But since 2008, Right. This is what we've been trained to see is rates kind of in that 5% and maybe a little bit lower, maybe like, you know, let's just say 3.875 to 5%. That's what we've been trained to see. Now, I will say cost of houses have gone up. We can agree on that, right? The cost of houses have gone up and I'll show you a little chart on that. But yeah. we, we need to make sure that we're, we're explaining to folks that 
this right here is not happening again unless there's just a major catastrophe, right? Uh, a war or something, you know, another, you know, a zombie virus from Russia that came over that they're trying to dig up, right? That's, that's where we might see something where the rates dip again. But guys, this is the norm, okay? This is where we're going to see the rates. Now, um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I'm going to show you some charts. They're predicting that these rates are going to come down. But I need you guys to see this right now that we need to get comfortable right around this six percentile. Okay. I want everybody to focus on this right now. So we see people talking about, hey, you know, I'm going to wait for the rates to come down. That's a disqualifying uh, uh, statement that they're making. They're saying that they don't want to buy or they're not ready to buy. But we have to make sure that we come up with reasons for them to buy. Okay. And it's, 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 it can, again, can I just say something really quickly? And when you're getting these objections from, your sellers, you might be listening to MK go through charts and graphs and things like that and going, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it, fuck it, interest rates, right? But it's, I didn't cuss, Shova, don't bite your lip. I saw you like cringing for a second there. I stopped myself. Uh, so it's, it's, it's important for you to be able to communicate this to your clients. This is why this is so important. And if you can't do this charts and graphs that MK is doing right now, then the education of your buyers is lacking. And it's one of the reasons why they're still on the fence because they say, I'm gonna rate, wait for rates to come down and or they complain that rates are high and you just agree with them. Yeah, rates are high right now. No, they're not. They're still not, right? And so to be able to break that down and provide context is gonna be a huge needle mover. Sorry, MK. No. I, I just want to make sure you guys have that one chart. The only cliff notes that you need to have right there, right, is if you, all you need to say is the rates, this is the new norm, okay? Unless we have a, a major war or something, um, these rates will ne we'll never see those two and a half rates again, okay? I don't want people to think that I'm going to wait for it because what happens when the rates come back down? Somebody tell me right now. Somebody, everybody should know this. Price is what? What's that? Price go up. Refi. Yep. Prices are going to go up, right? What happens when prices, okay, what happens when rates come down? That means that prices are going to go up, but you know what else that means? That means there's going to be more competition, okay? So what happens when there's more competition? That means you're going to pay more, okay? A lot so more. Why would you not lock in the price of that house? Stop it right now, right? Lock in the price of that house. Rates come down? Great. I'm just going to refinance, Okay. We need to make sure we're, we're educating people on this because once those pay, once those uh, the cost of the, the home goes up, then the payment's going to be higher. I wrote this down. I want you guys to think about this. People buy payments. They don't buy rates. Okay. People buy payments. They don't write, buy rates. The reason why I say that is, I don't know if you guys ever remember going to buy a car, but when I go buy a car, as long as the payment works for me, I'm going to lay down. I'll, I'll get the warranty. I'm going to get the, the, the paint ceiling. I'm getting everything. As long as that payment lines up, right? And I can see my kids playing in that yard. I can see myself commuting to work from that place. As long as that payment is in, in, in that budget, maybe even a little bit more, that's all that I'm worried about. So we need to stop that, that, that uh, rejection of, I can't buy now because the rates are high. We need to go by, okay, well, what is your comfort payment? What is the max you will spend if, you know, the commute is good um, and, you know, you have a good school for your kids, right? They can play in the yard. What does that payment look like? They say, well, you know what? The max payment I can do is $4,000. Okay. But if you only had to travel half the commute, could you do 4150 Could you do 4200 Right? Instantly right there, right? They're like, you know what? I could do that. Great. Okay. So let me show you what you can afford in that $4,200 payment, right? That's when we start talking as a lender and uh, uh, an agent, we're working with that borrower. Now we keep talking about this buy down guys. I've gotten more deals under contract with this buy down than I ever have before. And tell me why that is. Somebody say seller credit. Somebody just come off me and say seller credit. Seller credit. Seller credit. Oh man, you guys are brilliant. Awesome. I said it first. So man, so good. So the seller credit guys, the past two years, I mean, it was painful. I mean, we've lost deals asking for seller credit, right? But at the end of the day, if you have a buyer that they have to have seller credit because they don't have the funds, they have to have seller credit. You got to get creative. That means offering over and then asking for that credit, whatever we need to do, right? But we have to make sure that we're using that seller credit for the payment, okay? And we'll go through different ways to use that, okay? I'm going to go back to this graph because I, I think this is super important because I just want everybody to see this, okay? Follow me on this really quick, okay? 
So we're looking at this mortgage graph again. Okay. Uh, give me a little thumbs up. A little okay. You see it? Yep. Boom. Yep. So look back at 20, uh, 2002, right? So uh, orange is refi, blue is purchase. So we see a little refi bubble there. We come over. What happened in 2020 and 2021? Big refi boom. Why is that? Rates went down. Rates went down. Feds bought the rates down. Okay. We see that. Now, now that the rates went higher, now we have that inversion. Now that's mostly purchases, right? Refis are down. But here's the thing that people are noticing right now. Even with lower inventory, right? Purchases are still up, right? So I think because everybody's like, oh, the rates are higher. Nobody's buying homes. This is where Chad would say bullshit, right? I'm sorry, BS. That's what Chad would say, yeah. right? No, I'd say the latter. Okay. So we're going to come over here. We start seeing, so Fannie Mae's predicting right? That we're going to have, these rates are going to come down, but also these, uh, the purchases are going to increase. The, the reason being is inventory is low. That's the only reason why this number is lower is because inventory is lower. Okay. We need to make sure that we're making more sellers and then uh, helping them understand how to buy the next home. Okay. We need to make more sellers. We also need to build more homes. So those of you who are working with builders and land development and things like that, this is a great opportunity right now. Okay. Now look at this chart right here. Mortgage rates will fall to four and a half percent in 2023, according to Fannie Mae. Okay, four and a half percent down from at one point we're almost up to eight percent. How massive is that in payment? We're talking about maybe seven, eight hundred bucks a month in payment. Maybe even more depending on how high you're purchasing. Massive amounts. Okay, so what happens when we hit four and a half percent? Those people that are waiting are going to get into a pool where everybody else is waiting, right? And they're going to end up paying more, more money, right? Than they could have. They could have saved themselves hundreds of thousands of dollars by buying now and then just refinancing. Does that make sense to everybody? 100%. Yeah. Everybody to see that the sense of urgency right now, guys, is massive on if we can just take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing for one second. Does anybody have any quick, quick questions about that, that what I just presented? Okay. Anybody? No, I love it. Hey, MK, um, Michelle, can you screenshot that um, that article that MK shared? I'll send it. MK, you. can you send those? Can you can you yeah. maybe yeah. send that to me so I can drop that um, drop those slides? I don't know if you have this in a slide deck or just a yeah. A link. I'll just send it to you now. Yeah, now to, I'm going to send that to you because because I want to capitalize on this. Okay, so here's more articles. We're talking about uh, credible sources. I was able to do this. Um, uh, this presentation with actually uh, the chief executive <laughs> to the White House. He was, he worked, he came over and he wanted to do, he was friends with somebody in secondary marketing with Guild Mortgage. He did a live presentation with us and he was showing us a lot of this stuff, but he was talking about housing shortage. Uh, there's a housing shortage everywhere right now. Uh, we need to make more sellers. There's people that are sitting back because they think- And some honey from- uh... Oh, I got it. Okay. Um, there, there's a housing shortage out there right now. So we we're talking about creating more uh, opportunities for sellers. Here's where we have to get creative. Here's where we're earning our money. So in, in the pandemic, there were so many people that was like, you know what? I'm going to become a real estate agent because everybody is a real estate agent right now. And all you got to do is find somebody and write a contract. And to be fair, um, you wrote the highest and best contract and the highest and best contract won at that point, right? Yeah. And I feel like now in this market, your skills got to be sharper, right? That's why I'm such a big advocate of that breakfast club and everything that we're doing here, because if you're coming in with a BS offer, right, you got to make sure that you have it nice and tight, right? You need to make sure you're understanding what you're saying to not only your client, but to the listing agent, right? Everybody on the same page with that? Yeah. So as we're going through that right now, we're talking about um, how can we how can we make these sellers into buyers? How can we present the best thing that we can, the best product that we can, then we're having these conversations with our, our buyers the same way, right? So you have your seller conversation, your buyer conversation. I think, Chad, we talk about this all the time. It's a different script, right? It's yep. a totally different beast. But we need to get sellers moving to be able to push them forward to list. Buyers, how do we get them in this shopping mood? Does everybody know the stat that if you can get somebody pre-approved, within uh, uh, 24 to 48 hours and shopping that same weekend, the chances of them buying is almost 70% uh, higher than them not. I don't know if you guys knew that statistic. So kind of the, like the, the speed to lead is what we call it. 
if you guys have somebody that's in the ether, we call it, I don't remember back in the business chat, you remember that in the ether, you're excited, right? Yeah. Just like when you're on the car lot, like you're excited, like that's when it all makes sense. Now, the longer you take, that's when the paralysis kicks in. Everybody ever had that where somebody just starts second guessing everything and then you can't get them back on the track, right? Yeah. And, and we've all been there. So when we're talking about this, I want you guys to think about this. I just want to give you bullet points where you take them and then I want you to internalize these. When you have a client, you have to get them to uh, myself or, or lender, get them pre-approved as quickly as possible. You have to let them know what their max budget is and their comfort payment. And then you should have them already booked for an appointment to show as quickly as possible. So our goal is if you give us a lead, they should be pre-approved and they should be shopping within 24 to 48 hours. Okay. And what, and what we've talked about, MK, is not waiting to go find the ideal property before you set the appointment. That's what most agents will do. Well, let me send you some properties. And, and as soon as you find one that you no. like, we'll go ahead and set up an appointment. It's set the appointment, find, find the ideal houses, right? Call those, those listing agents and get the show time for that exact same time. You can always reschedule and say, hey, we could do 11 o'clock and you do 12 o'clock today. But the importance of getting them already into that process, getting them scheduled and then finding the inventory, big. Absolutely. And in the, so one, as we segue into this, guys, I don't know if you noticed this, but I got one more slide I want to show you. And this, this slide right there, I want, I want somebody to just come off of mute and tell me what do you think this means? Okay, so this is office vacancies. This is the rate right now. So office vacancy rate. So from 2019 to 2023, okay, this is the office vacancy rate. Tell me, what does this mean to you as a real estate agent? People are working at home. 100%. People are People working are at home. Yeah. Yep. People are working at home. So I want you guys to think about that. People want to, or people are doing, you know, remote jobs. They have now they're, they're, they're not in the office commuting and things like that. So, you know, if you're not commuting every single day, how much does that save you a month? A lot. A lot of money, right? So lunches, travel time, clothes, like people aren't dressing up anymore. You're like going to Nordstrom's to, to dress up, to go to work. Now they're wearing pajamas, right? Pajamas. Except for our team. Our team is, we're like, we're suited and booted every day. Every day. Allegedly. Dion said, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play good, you get paid good. Dion said that and he's getting paid good. Um, yeah. But I, I want to make sure that, that you guys are seeing this. So uh, I was talking to Drew about this too. So if people are not commuting into work, they're working from home. Now we're finding these homes that they can convert it. You know, they have rooms that can convert into home offices. Now, is it really important that they find the perfect, you know, location right here in Seattle? Maybe for schools and things like that. But now we're opening up more opportunities for people to move outside of their little geographical area. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So uh, high-speed internet, a bigger priority though. High-speed internet has to be good, not the dial-up. <laughs> um, so just to wrap that up a little bit, guys, I don't want to, I can, I can talk about this all day long, but the biggest thing I wanted to, to really just reiterate is interest rates. We need to make sure that, that people know right now, this is the norm. This is what we're going to see right now. And you will be able to refinance this down maybe to the mid fives, okay? Uh, sorry, four and a half to, to mid fives, okay? And that is okay. But all we're doing right now is locking in purchase price because one thing that's tried and true, you can look at any data, anytime house prices have dipped, they've gone right back up, okay? Anything that's dipped has gone right back up. So if you're going to wait on the sideline, you're going to miss this train, okay? But you got to create that sense of urgency. Yeah, if you do a translucent graph of what the interest rates have done over the, the past couple of decades and what home prices has done, they're not, they don't match, right? The interest rates have always gone up and down. The home values have always gone up. And are there some slight dips in there? Yeah, but if you zoom out, the, the trajectory is just insane. It looks like a Mount Everest ski slope is what it does uh, look like with home prices, right? And so these are this is the context that you need to get through uh, to your buyers in order for them to make the most reasonable decision, right? They're going to wait on saving money, right, on their monthly payment. They're going to end up losing money big time, you know. Um, perfect. Sorry to interrupt you, MK. No, you're good. You're good. That's that's all I had right there. I just wanted to make sure that we we're on the same good. page with that, guys. Um, I, I want to open up. Does anybody have any questions on maybe some uh, some challenges you're having with borrowers or uh, some common objections that you have that I can help you with 
or just maybe even loan product or, or details of a file, just uh, come off mute and let's talk about that. I think Q&A is the biggest way to learn. Drew, I'll go with you. I'm just going to call you. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're running into a lot of like renters that are stuck in leases and stuff like that, but there's also a lot of concern with their credit scores. Obviously, they, we know about the zero down payment programs, but I don't know if everybody knows about zero down payment programs or about your credit repair guy. Yeah. So one big thing I'll tell you guys is, you know, uh, people get embarrassed about credit and, and we need to be able to share success stories with them or some that's going to take that uh, embarrassment off of it. Right. So I'll tell you right now. So I own three different businesses. Okay. And, you know, it, depending on what part of the month is, my credit score will go from an 800 down to a 650, depending on how much is on a credit card. Right. So does that mean I have bad credit? No, but that also means that depending on utilization, maybe you have a couple of credit cards that's maxed out, right? So we need to be able to have that kind of story with people and explain it, right? Say, hey, listen, you know, you don't have bad, well, some people might have bad credit. You're not unrepairable, right? So there's a couple of different things you can say, hey, listen, my lender, I want you to connect with them. Uh, we do not charge for credit check, okay? You get pre-approved, there's no, there's no fee. There's a lot of people that think that if you go to get pre-approved, it costs money. Has anybody ever heard that before? They're like, oh, well, I don't want to pay for an application fee. Yeah, I heard that before. Yeah, so it doesn't cost any money to get pre-approved. Now, here's the great part. So we have what's called a what-if simulator, okay? So let's just say, Cody, let's just say you have four credit cards and all of them have a $500 limit. Um, I can go through and I can do a what-if simulator and say, hey, I'm going to take your Amex and you're going to put $250 towards that. You're going to put $100 towards your city card and $100 towards your Bank of America card. America card, And I can generate what that would do for your, your score. Mm -hmm. So that might say if you did that, right, your score would go to a 680, 682, okay? Now, mm -hmm. what we would do is you would pay those. You show me proof that we paid those. And it usually costs a couple hundred bucks, but as a company, we eat that fee. Right. So you pay those shows proof that you paid it. We upload it to the credit companies. And within seven days, we can rescore you to that 680. We're showing proof that you paid those payments. OK, so that's a what if simulator. OK, so that's a, a rapid rescore. So that's a great way to be able to get somebody that let's just say they were a 615 and you need to be a 620 to be to use down payment assistance. We'll just do a rapid rescore and get them to qualify. Make sense. OK, yes, now, sir. As far, now, as far as credit repair. There's a lot of people out there that, you know, they had somebody that was charged off. They had somebody that was charged off or something that's going on with their credit. So we work with a company called LSI. Okay. Um, the reason why we chose LSI, we've, we've used a lot of different credit repair companies in the past, but if somebody needs extensive work, we can give their details to LSI. LSI will call them, go through the whole breakdown of how to repair their credit. And then whenever there's a milestone, you'll get an email update. And what does that do for you? keeps the client keeps, in your pipeline. Keeps us informed, yeah, when they're ready yep. to buy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So then anytime you get one of those updates, you can reach out and be like, hey, hey, Shane, I just want to let you know that I, I'm super proud of you for getting this, you know, credit repair taken care of. Looks like you're pretty close to um, purchasing a property here. A um, little bit more work and looks like we can use down payment assistance. Do you have any questions for me so far? Oh, hey, I want to know about the market, blah, blah, blah. And then you're keeping that that back and forth going. So when they are ready, they're not just going to call Joe Schmo down the street. They're going to they're gonna stay with you. Okay. Another question. Love it. Anybody? The thing you were talking about with me a while ago that I don't know if everybody else knows is the uh, the oh god I can't think of the name of the program. Uh, basically, just straight money in the bank program. Money. It's called no down payment. Yeah. No, no credit score. I think it was what it was like. That. Oh yes, 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 yes. So there's, there's folks out there that pay cash for everything. <laughs> a lot of Yelm buyers. I don't know why it is, but you know, <laughs> they pay cash for everything and they don't have a credit score, right? So if somebody doesn't have a credit score, we, there's a program that we have that we can make a credit score for them. So we'll take 12 months of rent. We'll take 12 months of utility bills, 12 months of their phone bills, and we can create a, a credit report for them so that they can purchase. Because typically, historically, if you don't have a score, you can't buy, right? So Fannie Mae came out with a program that we've been piloting to where we can create a, uh, a profile for them. They do have to have as little as 3% um, uh, down, um, but at least they can buy. Is it no score or very, very low score? Zero score, so no score. 
So mo there's a lot of people that just have never financed anything, right? So we see that. Sir, problem. what's the name of that program? Uh, I think it's, uh, I'll, I'll look it up for you. It's credit, I, we just call it the No Score program, but. We'll call it No right. Score, yeah. Uh, well, MK, I, I love everything that you're saying because it, it ties into what our theme has been for a little while now, which is, man, in this marketplace, guys, I think we can all agree it's a lot tougher than it was eight months ago. Would you guys all agree with me on that? It's a little bit tougher, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. and, and, and so, you know, again, like MK was saying at the beginning of the call, you didn't have to have that much knowledge about the market or real estate in general to put deals together, you know, eight months ago, nine months ago, a year ago, right? But now what we're seeing paying off are agents that are able to actually put deals together, agents who know their financing, agents who know the market, agents who know their resources and know how to leverage those resources. And it's the difference between you doing, you know, 50 deals a year and you doing 11. Right. And we could all I think everybody on this call has some pretty big aspirations. And this is going to be a key element in it moving forward, leveraging your resources, knowing the market. So I would encourage everybody on this call to put a little bit of extra emphasis in their calendars for, for the week to get some updates on the market and to understand your tools a little bit more. Right. I'm sure that even some of you guys, just with the, the knowledge that MK introduced a, a few minutes ago, you're thinking of somebody in your pipeline who could probably use that. How many of you guys thought while MK was going through some of these things, oh, I can actually use that to motivate this buyer that I've got, right? Oh, that zero down, that would be perfect for this buyer that I've got in my pipeline. Any of you guys have any of those feelings or those thoughts while MK was going through these things? For sure. Absolutely. In, and the in credit sometimes, score correction too. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you're, you're the, with buyers, I find that they don't know anything about loans or financing a lot of the first time home buyers. So you're the first point of contact to start educating them and steering them in the right direction or helping them. So it's the them. difference between being an amateur and a professional, right? Is understanding your industry right. and being able to provide a service. Now you guys get paid a big chunk of money when you put those deals together, 20 grand, you know, 30 grand, 15 grand, whatever it is. It's like, we've got to, we've got to give them something back for that. You know, we've got to earn that. And that money is earned through our knowledge and knowing how to put deals together and getting somebody with a zero credit score into an actual home, right? Being able to provide context for that one person who's going to lose out on a hundred grand so that they can save a couple hundred dollars a month temporarily, right? It's, that's the reason why we make so much money, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And so I want that to be the culture moving forward. 729 culture, obviously, and we get shit done culture, which is we understand our resources and we know how to put deals together. Okay. Last week, we gave you kind of a specific task, which is how many dead buyers do you have in your pipeline? Or how many active buyers or stagnant buyers do you have in your pipeline right now? You guys remember having that conversation last week for all of you guys who were on here? How many of you guys went through your pipeline and identified all of the leads that you've got that, that are just kind of stagnant. How many of you guys did that over the course of the past week? These calls are gonna become more and more important than the action items that we give you are gonna be the reason why you're kicking up dust and, and, and actually bringing some transactions to the table uh, in the coming weeks. So it's important guys, that when we take in this information that we decide that we're gonna execute. We've got to decide that we are gonna execute each and every single week. So if you didn't do that last week, I just want some answers from you right now. How many how many leads do you think that you have in your pipeline that are just stagnant, waiting, right? Waiting for the right home, all of those good things. I need you guys to speak to me. You're all on easily, mute. Easily, easily like 30 or 40. Quite a few. Yeah, at least and, and 30. Really, yeah, a lot. Yeah, Chase Dolan, you and I talked yesterday and you have like 900 leads in your pipeline that are just stagnant, right? And then you've, you've got to classify those leads. Like which, which ones are my hot leads? Which ones are my on the fence leads? And I want to focus on your hot leads and your on the on on the fence leads. Okay. I want everybody action item number one. I want to make sure that everybody identifies those this week. We're going into the holiday week, right? There's going to be a lot of downtime. You guys are probably going to be working part time. I don't want any of you guys to admit to that, but I imagine that some of you guys are right? And that's okay. So if we're going to put any time into our business next week, let's put in smart time. Can you guys say that with me back? Smart time? 
Smart time. Smart time. Smart time. Smart time. What does smart time mean? It means that we put our action and our attention to what's likely uh, going to generate us some actual revenue now, which is going to be the springboard to start out January off with a bang. And I know that all of you guys want to do that. So you got your hot leads and you've got your, your, your stagnant to on the fence leads. Okay. We're going to go through those leads individually. And I want you to identify the problem. Okay. The, the root cause of why they're on the fence and how are you going to do that? You're going to reach out to them. Okay. So your prospecting time, I want you to turn to that. All right. And I want you to make your sole focus to identify the problem of every single stagnant lead that you guys have. Is that a tall task or a small task? Is that MK's daughter? It's a pretty tall task. She's so pretty MK. Good genes. Um, so, so is that, is that a tall order guys, or is that something that we can accomplish as a unit? We can do, we can it. do it. We can do it. They just stop listening to me. As soon as your daughter appeared on camera, it's like, Oh, I love that? her. Uh, She's my baby girl. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So we got to identify the problem. Are you guys writing this down? Identify the problem of each one of my buyers who are on the fence. Okay. And you're going to have to ask some serious questions, right? They're going to say things like, I, I just don't find, I, I can't afford it right now. Or, you know, just financially, it's not okay. Or we're going to wait till the market gets better. And so when I say find the problem, I want you guys to search for a specific problem. Okay. And also indicate that it's okay to share with that, share with you something else that might be going on. Right now, here's how you're going to do that. Right. Because people will give you surface objections, won't they? Right. It's objections that don't mean anything or things that they're afraid to admit. We know that with the economy, that there's a lot of kind of uncertainty, right? And so people aren't necessarily forthcoming with that information. For all you know, somebody's worried about getting laid off. They don't want to tell you that. So people are worried that they might not be able to afford it. They won't tell you that unless you ask them specifically and give them permission to share that with you, right? Can anybody give me an example as, uh, uh, um, can somebody give me an example as, how you could say that, how you can invite them to give you that information. Anybody at all? What's so if I say, you know what, I, I'm just not seeing anything that I like, Cody, how could you come back and say that it's okay to share with me something else? Um, I guess you could um, try to be more specific and ask them what specifically have them holding back. Is it just a matter of not finding the right property or is it something else? Yeah, and that's that's the key, right? You want to say, okay, so it has to be the right property, or affirm their objection, right? But also let them know that that you know there's there's a lot of things going on right now in the market. A lot of people are having different challenges. So is there anything else that I might not be seeing, or that I might not be able to see that's involved in your decision making process right now? I want to say that again. You want to affirm the fact that you know, whether their objection is valid or, or whatever, because you can come up with a solution with that later. And you want to say a lot of people are having a lot of different challenges right now, a lot of different mindset things going on right now. Is there anything else specific that I might not be seeing that's involved in your decision-making process, right? That's going to invite them and, and make them feel comfortable enough to share with you the information that you need to work with. Well, I'm not sure that I can afford it. Okay, great. Well, what does that need to look like exactly? right? This is where you can actually create progression in your business. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Makes sense. Now, yeah. now you guys were all given specific scripts to re-motivate your buyers last week. How many of you guys downloaded those? Those specific scripts that we went over last week that are going to, that are going to be a lightning rod in your pipeline. Chad, are they in the uh, co-founder profile? They are in the co-founders group Facebook page, and they are also in the co-founders group uh, uh, web page. Yeah, they're okay. inside, come inside the learning hub. And then if you guys all just go into the co-founders Facebook page under files, anything we teach on here, we go and upload. So like later, MK is going to give me um, those, those charts uh, and, and graphs that we looked at. I'll put all that in the system for you guys so you can easily access it. The co-founders group on the Facebook page, just go to files. You'll see it in there uh, very recently. Okay. And uh, so I want you guys to download those. It sounds to me like not a lot of people did that. And I know that all of you guys want to do more deals. And the one thing that I tell everybody who wants to survive, not survive, but thrive in this marketplace is you've got to become an executioner. Okay. And I've had this conversation with several of you guys as to what an executioner is, right? Which is I've got tasks 
and I've got to go out there and get these tasks done. Knowing and having the faith that these are going to have a significant impact on my business, or the whole thing that we've been talking about is putting these deals together, right? Getting creative about the way that we approach our buyers and sellers and putting these deals together. And those are proven ways from top producers in your marketplace to get your buyers off the fence and actually put deals together. So I want you to take that seriously and I want you to apply those this week and next week to those to those stagnant leads that you've got. Fair enough? That's All right. Fair. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Anybody have any questions about that? Nope. No. Is this awesome. being recorded? Of course it is. Too is guys, if you guys want to talk through like specific scenarios, you got to reach out and call me. Just say, hey, MK, this is what I see that's happening. What do you think about this? Um, if I don't know, I'll find the answer for you. But any kind of trying to get creative on a file or saving a deal, reach out and let's try and get this deal done for sure. Yeah, it's one of those things, guys, that some of you guys have to dive outside of your comfort zone of I don't want to bother anybody, right? And you got to be like resource hustlers. Like I've got all of these things at my disposal. I've got MK Bruce as a lender who can answer any questions that I need, help me get creative and finding ways to put deals together. You've got your coaches, your resources, your CRM system with all the off-market data on there. You've got a ton of resources that you've got to leverage. You got to become re resourceful and be that executioner. And don't worry about the other people around you. You're not wasting their time. We're here to help. Okay. Um, now, Michelle, what are we what are we getting into today? We're well, I was gonna cut us off because we won't. That's gonna be a whole 45 minute uh, marketing session. We've got more scripts and strategies that we want you guys to apply in. I mean, Kuli, unless you think we have time, I guess we could dive uh, we got we got time. I want to give this to them this yeah. week because it's yeah, gonna we be got important. Time. Let's go. Yeah, thank you. I love it. it. So we're gonna give you some marketing strategies today, right? Some actual templates and stuff like that that you can actually go out and it's an E-word that I'm looking for. What's that word that I'm looking for? That E-word? Execute. That when yeah, when you're given a tool, you got to go out there and execute. That's what I was looking for right there, right? Some tools that you can actually go out there and execute on while the, while you're, you're doing everything else, okay? Um, and so one of them is leveraging a buyer to get a listing, okay? This is the R. I say getting K like I'm going South Park. Uh, We've got to get smarter about the way we work. The art of turning one deal into multiple deals is going to be huge. It's something that all of the top producing agents really aim and focus on, right? They look for, well, where's my leverage, right? How can I do this exactly? There are different ways that you can go about taking that one transaction and turning it into two. Um, and you got to be a market maker, like we were talking about. You got a buyer ready to go. Use that buyer to get yourself a listing. Now, how do we do that? We, do, we can do that in several different ways, okay? And the ways that we're going to talk about today is posting your buyer's needs on social media. How many of you guys are active on social media? I feel like a dinosaur grandpa asking you guys, you guys are into that social media? Big, big factor right now, okay? Writing letters into the neighborhoods that you want to do business in or that your buyers are looking in. How many of you guys do that now? No, nope. no. Okay. No. Yeah. Simple door knocking scripts and ways to kick up dust emails that you can send to your database and how you can ask for referrals. Okay. So I'm going to go through those major things and give you some templates and some examples and things that you could do. All right. And I want you to remember that these things that we're going over are not just from me. These are from all of the top producers in your industry are following a similar platform. Fair enough. Should, by the time we're done in 20 minutes here, like you guys should take away from what you just heard from MK to literally these exact little scripts or things you can do on these different processes that are on the screen here today. Like you can go do these today and start creating and putting some deals together. All right, perfect. Okay, so like an example of a social media post. Now, are you, how many of you guys are actually going all in on social media? And how many of you guys are really passive about it right now? Going all in. Somewhere in between. Man, you guys invest a lot into drip campaigns and things like that. That social media will be your best drip campaign that you could possibly have, right? And they get to see your face, not just an email that shows up in their inbox. Okay. Mm -hmm. That that social media is important. Um, so an example of like a social media post that you can do, 
okay, to get just some 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 people riled up. All right, and and Michelle, you're going to post this. Do you have this up on the screen right now? Yeah, yeah, everything's on the screen. You guys can see my okay. screen. Right? So yep. here's an example of, of a great social media post. And this isn't something that you just like type the words out and post it. Make a video, right? The market is down. Uh, thinking of cashing in and selling your rental, we've got a buyer looking for three rentals uh, with tenants. DM me, right? It's got that direct action. Now, understand that you guys might be thinking, well, I don't really have a buyer, okay? How many of you guys think that right out of the bat, right out of the gate? You got to rid your mind of like the how you're going to make that happen because you can make it happen. And if you remove the how, then everything else is easy. And you guys know that with the right marketing, with the right aggressive pursuit, you could definitely find that inventory, right? You can definitely find the buyer. You can definitely find somebody who's willing to invest in a property that's cash positive, right? But what you're doing is you're churning up interest, okay? Uh, so th th there's... You might not have somebody in the room right now who would buy those properties, but if that property is priced right, right? If that rental is priced right, you will never have a problem finding a buyer for that property, correct? Correct. Right. There's now, always a buyer, right? You look at the network of agents here and the investors and the clients, there's always a buyer. Right. Um, and, and so we're going to provide this so that you guys can use this script on your social media. Watch how much that kicks up traction. There's a lot of people with a lot of uncertainty who are thinking a lot of weird things right now that you might not be, be aware of, right? But it's important to capture the attention of the people who are in the market for your services. That's a good example of one, okay? Um, I've got a first-time home buyer in ABC area looking for a three-bedroom, three-bath house. And give them a specific community and city that you want to do business in, Okay. Now, what do you think is going to happen when people see that who are on the fence, right? They might DM you, they might not, right? But you're going to kick up that interest and kick up that dust and also create the conversations of people who have been thinking about it, but we're on the fence. Okay. Are you guys picking up what I'm laying down here? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yes, I am. Okay. It's got to be engaging. Yeah. It's got to be punchy language. And you just got to keep it short. doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Go ahead. And I wanted to just make highlight a point real quick. You look at that little phrase, like, hey, got a first time home buyer looking in Thin Hill for such and such, right? It's got to be specific enough and broad enough where it could like relate to everybody in that area. Does that make sense? But it has to be community specific. It's got to have like bed, bath specific, but generic enough where it could relate to like half the houses there. So I just want to make sure that's, that's really important when you're leveraging these marketing strategies and putting them out there. You're trying to be broad, but not too specific to where you disqualify somebody. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and so a lot of you guys have buyers right now in your pipeline. Show your buyer on social media. Tag them, right? Take a picture of them. Do a video with them. We're looking for X, Y, and Z. Do you know anybody looking to sell something like that? Send them a text showing all of the great work that you're doing for them. You know, show your friends and family and the people who follow you on social media, all of the great work that you're doing on behalf of your clients, right? Could be the difference maker and you choose them choosing you or them choosing anybody else, right? You're also given an example of your service um, right there on your social media where everybody sees you. Make sense? Yep. yep. Now, don't start posting their stuff without letting them know that you're going to do it. Make sure that they're okay with that first, but get them to buy in. Get them on your social media too, all right? Right, like if you, I'm going to use an example, like tagging them, uh, you're, you're, you're showing them the work that you're doing to find them a property, right? That's what we're doing. That's our job. That's what sets us apart. Um, and that's why that part is super, super important. We're showing, articulating, and demonstrating why you're the professional in the marketplace. Exactly. And it shows, it, it shows your COI, the people around you, also the clients that follow you on social media, that people are out there being active right now, right? Which is important. You know, I mean, people do things because other people are doing them all the time. And yep. even if you're a newer agent, I mean, Shova, let's take you for an example. You're young, you're, you're young, right? You're just getting into the real estate business. One of the most important things that you want to do, especially to your COI and the people that you know, is show them that you're competent in this business already, 
right? And so the more transparent you can be about that, the more people are going to trust you, right? The more likely people are to reach out to you. So it's important for people like you as well, okay? But again, show people that it's okay to be out there being active right now. Other people are doing it. I can do it too, right? So don't get hung up on the, the rules that don't exist, guys. This is just marketing, right? So don't get hung up on the details. It's okay. It's okay to get your marketing on. I just want to give you that permission, right? Go ahead, Michelle. I, I also just wanted to add, you know, using someone that's like newer, you know, this is, we talk about this all the time of activity creates activity, right? You're demonstrating yeah. that you have activity going on, that you have active clients. We're always looking for listings. We're always looking for buyers. That is our job. And, you know, we have such a big network here and we talk about this all the time with social media posts. If someone within your network, uh, Shoba, uh, using you as an example, right, you're in that whole group there. People are sharing stuff all the time. So when you see someone else sharing something, maybe you're brand new and you don't have an active client today, take what they're sharing and you share that, right? Go find a, go find a seller, a, a, a listing for yourself or for potentially for that client, right? Use that activity and you stuff that activity that's going on with your peers to demonstrate the activity. Does that make sense? All right. Yes. So, so moving on. And so I want everybody on the call to make that an executable task this week. Okay. Before so the week is out. That anyone could do? Like, does everyone on here have a buyer looking for something? Everyone. Yes. It should be super easy to do. A uh, uh, post on a social media. This could be in a uh, text to your database. This could be a video, a short video on a social media. Super simple. Okay. Now, remember, these are things that top agents in your marketplace are already doing. Top agents around the country are already doing, right? And it's proven to be effective. So the next step is write some letters to neighbors. Okay, then here's an example of a great letter strategy that's been proven and that actually works. All right, dear whoever, would you be interested in selling ABC property to a client of mine? If yes, call or text my cell at da 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 da. Very simple. And all of this shit you might be saying, well, this isn't exactly rocket science and it's not meant to be. It's meant to be short to the point and, and attract the right people that, that you want to do business with. Okay, so all of this stuff is simple stuff, but if you execute it, it's going to pay off dividends. Dear whoever, would you be interested in selling this property to a client of mine? If yes, please call or text me at this number. Complicated or easy? Easy. Easy. Very easy. Okay. All right. Um, and if you really do have a particular buyer in that area, Right, the best way is 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 door knocking, and I'm talking to a lot of agents lately who do anywhere from 20 to 25 deals a year by just door knocking alone. You know, and to me, those guys are kind of proof positive that that strategy still works and is immensely effective. Time consuming, yes, but the reason why those agents are able to go out there and do that, if you had to think about it, is why? Why are those agents doing 25, 30 deals a year from door knocking? Why do you think that is? We got a lot of agents, a lot of competition out there. How are they doing 30 deals a year with this strategy? Because it works. You got to do it. And a lot it's of people it works. don't do it. It's because it works. More importantly, Robin, you're absolutely right. Most agents don't do it. Most agents won't do it, right? Especially in a day and age where we're so obsessed with uh, drip campaigns and things like that, relying on technology rather than leveraging technology, right? That big boost of your business all of that technology that you're using is to get out in front of people and door knocking is cutting out all the bullshit and getting straight to the consumer, right? Having those real estate conversations every single day. Um, so what should I say when I go door knock? Good question. I'm about to tell you. Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm so ready. <laughs> and again, this is all too powerful when you actually do have that buyer. So when I say that you guys need to go through your stagnant buyers or hot buyers and identify like who's on the fence, remember, you can take those and apply them to this. So it doesn't have to be hypothetical buyer A, it can be this buyer here, all right? So, hey, I've got a buyer that's looking in this neighborhood. It's gotta be this neighborhood. It's gotta be a three bedroom, two bath, single story. And, and again, you've gotta make it generic enough so that you're not disqualifying any homes. Because the point of this is to find a find a, a property for your buyer, obviously, but also to get you what? 
paid. More transactions. It's turning a buyer into a listing, right? It's also meant to get you more productive and turn a buyer into a listing, right? So if you say, Chova, something too specific, like I've got a buyer, it's got to be a two bedroom, three bath home, and it's got to have a three car garage, and it's got to have X, Y, and Z too, and you disqualify their home, well, you just walk, lost yourself a deal, mm -hmm. right? But if it's generic enough, people are actually like, well, I consider selling, what would they be willing to offer? And right there, you've identified somebody who would at least consider selling. What is that? That's a listing lead, regardless of whether your buyer wants it or not, right? 100%. Yep. You guys pick, did, did I lose half of you guys? Are you guys no. picking up what I'm laying down here? 100%. No, it's great. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So what I would like you guys to do this week or going into next week, I would I'd like you to identify a couple of buyers in your pipeline where you could actually go door knock two neighborhoods around Christmas. Yes. Christmas sweater on sing a holiday song. If you want Rally point properties, who does a hundred deals a year was out there Christmas caroling neighborhoods and they get deals from it. You know what I mean? So get out there and actually get out in front of people. Is there anybody who's not willing to do this or is everybody on this call pretty much on board with that strategy? Good. I like it. So I like how you're using sign language because now you know I'm just looking at you directly because <laughs> I've called you out a couple of times. Um, I want to. I was right. just going to throw out really quick before you jump on the next one. Um, how many of you guys actually have your databases inside of KV4? Yeah. Uh, Getting there. Not the company. Yeah, I do. Two. So it's not an excuse. Oh, we can pick up our phone and we can make the call. We can send a text message. But I don't know if you guys realize that inside of KV4, your database is in there. You can just plug that same text in and with one text and button, send it to your entire database, right? The same script we're talking about from the very first slide, all very super simple. We've got a client looking for this. Do you know anyone, right? These are all, this now takes a task that might take you, instead of sending out a hundred text messages, you're sending out one. Okay, this is why we leverage technology. Same thing if it's a video, send it to the entire database. Send it to 5,000 people at once, 500 people at once, or five, it doesn't matter. Okay, text, email, and video. That's why it's important to have your entire database inside of KB4. You can hashtag it by communities, you can hashtag it by counties, you can do all sorts of stuff. Anyone who on here from the from the lack of response, who on here knows they need to do more work in that avenue? Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. Sure. I would say, I know we're in the holiday week, so I would probably say, because next week there won't be one, um, I'll probably talk with Dexter on getting people up to speed on the Wednesday uh, KV4 class, because this is fundamental basics, guys. That should let you guys be doing activity to your databases um, on an ongoing basis every single week. Basic, basic, okay. basic fundamentals that everybody should be set up on. Okay. And I got to get through this, Michelle, because I got like three minutes left. And for those of you guys, I'm going to talk like the micro machine man. Uh, you guys might not know who that is because you're mm. probably all younger than I am. Um, open houses, guys, these are, these are important now more than ever. Do you want to up your transaction count? I imagine putting yourself in front of people is probably one of the most important things that you can do. And again, if you notice, all of these things are designed to get you out in front of people. So I want to see everybody get at least two open houses for themselves to start January with. Okay. So whether you've got to do that this week, this weekend, uh, next week, I want you guys to, to get at least one open house before January 1st. All right. And I want one open house afterwards. Okay. And here's a strategy for your open house. Number one, sit in the open house, obviously, and go knock all the doors in the neighborhood, invite those neighbors to come in, right? And also, you know, have that same scripted conversation so you can kind of kill two birds with one stone here. You know, got a buyer who's looking in the neighborhood. Uh, the one I'm sitting in today isn't a good fit for them, but they're looking for something similar in the area. Have you ever considered selling or do you know anybody who's looking to buy or sell in this neighborhood? Again, you're you're taking something and you're turning it into something else. Right. Um, one of the most important things too, guys, and, and it's just to revert back to a topic that we were saying before, which is, you know, if your if your clients are not following you on social media, you should encourage them too. Okay, because all of this stagnation uh, and this mindset that people have can be defeated with them seeing you taking action every day. 
with them seeing you do an open house, with them seeing you out there engaging with people, talking about buying or selling every day. They might have this thing in their mind where interest rates are up, so nobody's out there doing anything right now. And if they constantly see you on social media, working with buyers and sellers all the time, well, what does that tell them? Tell them that they didn't know as much about the real estate market as they thought they did, right? And it looks as though maybe the market's slowing down, but showbiz seems to be kicking ass still, right? It's a powerful message. Don't you guys agree? It's a powerful yeah. message. So rather than posting pictures of your biceps and shit all the time, right? <laughs> Just post you actually going out there and doing your job and motivating people. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, boy. Cooly. That, you know what, MK, if I had biceps like yours, I'd be posting them all the time. Too, so. <laughs> it's just, I don't have them, so I hate them. Uh, anyway, all right. So I want to put this in a checklist for you guys. And I, I'm seriously, I want to see how many of you guys are willing to execute on this with the understanding that one of the biggest problems in your marketplace right now are agents who aren't willing to execute, right? Agents who are uh, just hypnotized by what the market used to be. And it, and it won't be until you're dropped on your face with a lack of production that you start adapting to being an executioner because you will realize that this is not a condition for your job moving forward. This is something that's required in the industry. Fair enough? Fair. Fair enough. All right. Fair. All right. Who's got any questions, concerns, comments before we wrap up, Michelle? I did that in like five minutes. Not too bad. That's not the first time you said that. Now, Chad, uh, I was trying to look. I was trying to look for the uh, the scripts on the, uh, the the co founder site, but I don't see them. Can you tell me where I could find them? That's not the first time we've said that either. Um, you should know exactly where that is, Mr. Walker. Um, know your resources is something that we talked about constantly, right? This I don't know where to find things, man. We've got it all for you, right? Where, Michelle? Uh, I'm going to show you guys here. Very, very easy. Two places where all these go. So we'll do screen two. You guys see my screen? Yep. Yes, I'm on the co-founder's Facebook page. So you just got to show where it says files. I think it depends on how big your screen is expanded. So it's right here. So anything we attach, PowerPoint, script, checklist, anything like that, it gets attached as a file forever. Any images we ever post, it'll be under media forever. So if you're ever looking for something, we posted a chart. From a year ago, it's going to be right here. And anything you're looking for that was a file, a handout, it's going to be right here under files. Here's every file in order forever. There's so much content in here. So it's right here. It's the tactical buyer scripts in today's market. It's also, guys, all inside the co-founders platform. Co-founders platform, log in. You're in the learning hub. It'll be under the um, uh, whole section, actually, just for this topic we've been doing since the market shifted with all of the conversation changes um, and tactical conversation uh, handlers. Right. Um, and so, yep. And so we're going to attach a checklist again to that so that you guys have all, you guys all have access to that and, um, and make sure that you know, I want you to send that checklist back to me saying, you know what, I got this done. And I promise you, if you focus on getting those things done and you take those actionable steps seriously, your business will not be in the same position that it was in today. Even if your business is good today, it could be great next week right? If it's not good today, it could be good next week, right? And if we take the actionable steps required to, uh, to, to, to force progress, then we are going to see the result in a market where people are getting lazy, all right? So anybody have any concerns, any questions, uh, anything that we can answer for you? No, this was great information. Thank you. Good info, guys. Right. Appreciate you guys it. see how if you just were yeah. a little more creative, if we were just all a little more creative, we could do more deals. And Shova, I see your I see your question there. So let's just say uh, Shelly's your buyer and you're trying to find her a property in this neighborhood and you send out a letter and you're door knocking. Um, you're finding prop people that are potentially looking to sell. Well, Shelly might not buy that listing, but now you're talking to a seller that is interested in selling and you're winning the listing. That's what actually happens the majority of the time. Does, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Does that answer that for everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Investor looking for this. You've got client Shelly looking for this. Uh, you find a, a couple potential leads in there that are open to selling. Who knows if Shelly's going to want that, right? That's I'll, I'll tell out. you, what, Michelle. I'll I'll say this: it, it has when you do that, it shows people that you're willing to go outside of the box to do what it takes 
to get them yeah. sold. And they only need a few examples of that. They're like, you know what? At least that dude works. Work you know what I mean? I want to emphasize that so much, guys. Do not yeah. miss it. This is what sets you apart to your sellers and your buyers that you're looking for buyers and to your buyers, why they're going to stay loyal to you and sign that buyer's agreement with you in that buyer presentation because you are showing them that you are finding them off market properties. That is the goal. That is the key. That's what they want. That's what sets you apart. You are demonstrating to them as much as you can every step of the way that that's what you are doing. Knowing and that it's not hard to get your real estate license, knowing that there's a sea of competition out there. The constant question that you've got to ask yourself is, what is my degree of separation? Mm. And these are your separation points. Well, and Chad, I just had a thought about, you know, you were wanting everybody to do two open houses, you know, the next couple of weeks and doing that door knocking, you know, if you haven't done it before, this is kind of a good way to get your feet wet doing it because you can just take flyers around and announce your open house to the neighborhood. 100%. 100%. And you can use that script. On every one of them when you knock at the door. Yep. All right. So let's get everybody out of here. Yeah, let's get everybody out of here. There's going to be a checklist. Um, hopefully, all of you guys do that, execute on it. MK, thank you so much for showing up. We're working thank on some you, really, MK. we're working on some really interesting things with MK that we hope to roll out here pretty soon. That's going to be a huge benefit for all of you guys and these stagnant buyers or buyers that are on the fence okay so we won't have this call next week um michelle when is our next tuesday sale it'll meeting? be the first first week of january so we see you guys at the launch of the year so oh. this is Merry christmas to everyone are we merry christmas merry christmas everybody yeah merry christmas guys I'm MK, send me yeah. that powerpoint mk okay. will you send me that powerpoint yeah i'll send it to you okay okay cool all right, Christmas, you guys. Thank you Bye. for listening, everyone. Does this mean that I don't get a gift? I'm, I'm trying to understand. No, no gift.